These days, it's difficult to find a country that does not declare its intention to become a carbon neutral state. The United States, Europe, and even China are trying to balance their economies to reduce CO2 emissions. However, did you know that there is already a state in the world that not only has achieved carbon neutral status, but surpassed it, receiving the title of the carbon negative country? Instead of the generally accepted concept of gross domestic product, the term national happiness is used here, and more than 96% of local residents consider themselves to be happy people. Welcome to the Innovative Techs. Today we will tell you how one of the most closed countries became the world's first carbon negative state. And now, the Kingdom of Bhutan is before you. Locals call their country Druk Yul, which translated into English sounds like the Dragon Country. This is one of the most closed states on our planet, located in South Asia. Bhutan's neighbors are India, China, and several small countries, which puts the kingdom in a difficult geopolitical situation. Along with this factor, Bhutan has a very difficult history, and at a certain period of time, there was a civil war spanning for over a hundred years. However, everything changed with the coming to power of the fourth king, Jigme Singe Wangchuk, who launched reforms in 1972 and began to bring the country out of total isolation. Technologies, such as electricity, telephones, as well as television, arrived late to the country and formed a unique approach in the local society. Foreign guests began to appear here only in the mid-70s, and local residents received the first televisions in 1999, when the ban on broadcasting television programs was lifted. Both improvement and modernization of infrastructure are closely intertwined with the traditions of the Land of the Dragons. Sometimes, this leads to very unusual consequences. For instance, the familiar to all indicator called gross domestic product has been replaced by a more acceptable in the opinion of the local leadership, gross national happiness. This is just the tip of the iceberg, since the government of Bhutan and its citizens approach almost every issue related to the state system in their own unique manner. As we've already mentioned, the Dragon Country is located between two industrial giants, India and China. However, this did not lead to an economic boom and rapid development. This is due to the close intertwining of social and economic spheres with religion and adherence to traditions. On the one hand, such a relationship significantly slows down the introduction of various technological innovations. On the other hand, it relieves the country of a host of problems. For the record, Bhutan is among the few countries that have virtually eradicated corruption. In this regard, it is second only to Singapore, Hong Kong, the United Arab Emirates, and Macau. The kingdom's approach to environmental standards is also closely linked to religious trends and traditions. Bhutanese profess Buddhism and develop their country in strict accordance with this worldview. Religion here influences all aspects of life and is supported by a fairly strong vertical of power. However, the government, headed by the fifth king, Jigme Keser Namgyal, approaches the government with a surprisingly sound vision which many states can envy. For example, the king personally travels around the country and encourages citizens to participate in the development of Bhutan. His land reform is still considered one of the most successful government projects in the world. We tell all this for a reason. Drukyul approaches the issues of environmental safety in a comprehensive manner and with an eye to the other critical areas for the country. Balanced development is the cornerstone of this society. Environmental sustainability is closely linked to economic growth, social development, and ancestral cultural heritage. Now, let's move on to the facts that made Bhutan a carbon-negative nation. The government perceives nature as a full-fledged participant in all processes within the country. In fact, Bhutan is a huge nature reserve. It is forbidden to use chemical fertilizers for cultivating the land, as well as any kind of industry that can harm the environment. Garbage is collected separately, with a clearly defined gradation. Even houses in the land of the dragon are built with an eye on minimal harm to nature. One of the mandatory additions is bright colors, 
and a large number of patterns. The next factor in the successful fight for the environment lies in the strictly regulated tourism industry. The current leadership is actively developing this industry, which is the third most important in the economy of Bhutan. However, everything is being done so the growing number of foreign visitors does not have a detrimental effect on the environment. If you want to visit the paradise of South Asia, then in addition to the $40 visa, you will need to pay between $200 and $250 each day of your stay in the Land of the Dragon. Not that cheap, right? For this money, you get everything you need to travel, from a three-star hotel to camping gear. This amount includes the so-called development levy, which is $65 and is aimed at financing health, education, and the environment. As a result, study and medicine are completely free here. The last aspect that affected Bhutan's carbon negative status is the slow development of infrastructure. The first road surface was built here only in the 60s, and cars to this day are a kind of curiosity for the local residents. The situation with the automotive sector is clearly demonstrated by the fact that the main city of Drogula Timpu is the only capital in Asia where there are still no traffic lights. Although Bhutan has already achieved outstanding results in terms of a green economy, the country's leadership does not intend to stop there. Civil society here is not chasing the benefits of civilization, trying to become technological and industrial leaders. Instead, the focus is on self-sufficiency and respect for nature. The Constitution of the Land of the Dragon states that 60% of Bhutan's territory should be preserved as reserves and protected by law as an inviolable forest. Today, woodland accounts for over 70% of the country's total area. Among other interesting facts related to the ecological vision of this state, the following points can be highlighted. The country has a strict ban on the export of timber. Hydroelectric power plants are used as the main sources of electricity. Electricity is free for farmers. Fossil fuels are not used in industry. The economy develops by means of agriculture. At the same time, the stake is made on environmentally friendly processes. Bhutan signed an agreement with Nissan to supply electric vehicles to the country. Management hopes to completely replace internal combustion engine vehicles with electric vehicles. In 2015, a unique record was set in the Land of the Dragons. In just an hour, volunteers planted 50,000 trees, and this trend is still supported, actively encouraging the greening of the country. Right now, Bhutan is the only country that absorbs carbon rather than emitting it into the atmosphere. By 2030, they plan to achieve zero levels of air pollution with greenhouse gases. In combination with the vast expanses of green space, this will lead to the fact that the country will begin to absorb several times more carbon than it does now. What do you think? Is it possible to apply the experience of Bhutan to other industrialized countries? Share your opinion in the comments below the video, and please press the thumbs up if you liked it. You're on the Innovative Text channel, and we'll see you soon, and take care.